Tensions between Iran and the United States started rising dramatically last year, in large part because of U.S. withdrawal from the Iranian nuclear deal. Uh, President Obama and his administration negotiated the deal in 2015 in an effort to keep Iran from developing nuclear weapons. Well, President Trump, of course, pulled the U.S. out of the treaty in May of 2018, calling it one-sided and the stupidest deal of all time. He also reimposed crippling economic sanctions on Iran. Holly Dragas is an Iranian-American analyst and a non-resident fellow at the Atlantic Council, and she joins us now from London. I try to piece together, how did we get here? So, Holly, how can you explain, can you explain the, the impact the nuclear deal had on Iran and what happened when Trump pulled us out of it? Well, the nuclear deal was a multilateral agreement between Iran and the five members of the UN Security Council, some of who are our greatest allies in Europe. And so when the Trump administration decided to pull out in May 2018, it was with the basically with the idea that um, U.S. President Donald Trump would get a better deal than his predecessor, Barack Obama. And um, as a result, he decided to reimpose sanctions on Iran, despite the fact that Iran had not violated the nuclear agreement. And it was from then on when the United States um, pushed for a maximum pressure policy that has arguably led us to this point. Um, and especially, more importantly, was when um, the United States decided that they were going to ban Iran from selling its oil in May, and something that Iran calls economic warfare. And this is where the escalation between the United States and Iran has started since. Yeah, so, Holly, if we were still a party to that deal, would we be in the situation that we are, are right now? Arguably, no. Um, the reality is um, we're in a very different situation. This escalation has been on a moving ball since May, and um, it resulted in some of the things that your program earlier mentioned. Um, the fact that um, the tanker attacks in the Persian Gulf in June and July, the Aramco attacks, um, a lot of the um, escalation in Iraq during the past week, a lot of this wasn't happening um, three years ago or even under the Barack. Obama administration. So this is definitely a new thing, and it just seems like it's getting worse by the day. Yeah, it does. And as a result, a lot of people are calling for calm. I do want to tell you the breaking news, at least from your post right there, the British defense minister, within the last few moments, um, issued a statement urging all parties to show restraint after the United States, of course, killed Soleimani. He says that uh, the United States has the right to defend itself against imminent threat, but is calling for calm. You get a sense of that is the, 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 the feeling from many of our allies, including the UK and France, after the strike? Uh, absolutely. I, I think that the fact that everybody was caught off guard, not just Iran analysts like myself, but a lot of our own allies were not aware of it until it happened. And understandably, a lot of countries are calling for restraint, including neighboring Arab countries in the Middle East, such as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, because they realized that this was a miscalculation on the part of the Trump administration, that this was a reckless move. And it, part, it seems like, as the pieces are coming together, that it may have been based on Trump's emotions and not something that he had thought through. I know that the Trump administration has said that this was an eminent threat, but it, from our understanding, there was no um, real evidence that actually it was razor thin. So uh, as the pieces are starting to fall into place, we try to understand what were the re reasons behind the assassination of IRGC Hood's Force Commander Qasem Soleimani. I, I think uh, a lot of people are starting to realize that this was a bad idea and that this is just leading the United States and its allies down a path of escalation that nobody wants. Yeah, even if it doesn't end in, in violence against the United States or our allies, it could have far-reaching impact. Oil prices were all over the place last night and yesterday in trading. Holly Dargris, our thanks to you for joining us from London. Well,